Okay guys, so we're back. So I actually was uh, washing my uh, nicotine infested one that you saw in the last video. And if you didn't check it out, I have a part one where I actually picked up, uh, you know, two outruns. And then uh, part two would be when I just tried experimenting with uh, swapping boards out. I had tons of board sets. So I have four outrun board sets and two turbo outrun board sets. And, um, you know, so for now I'm not getting any sound and you can see that the road is missing. So, um, that's basically it. Yeah, you see it right there. So, um, what I did was I took the nicotine infested one, the one that I got from eBay for like 50 bucks. And, uh, Arcade Jason actually helped me out and I, uh, got a tip from him on his channel. And his channel is great. You should check it out. Uh, but anyway, um, on his, he suggested I put toilet bowl cleaner. It's called the works. It actually has, um, CLR kind of built in. Uh, so, you know, it takes away calcium, lime and rust. And uh, so I put that on and did a video on that. So that's coming soon. Um, and while I was doing that, I was burning ROMs for the board because uh, the ROMs on there were just so deteriorated. The legs were all broken. I ended up burning all new ROMs. So in doing so, I realized that some were 64 kilobytes and others were 32 and so on. And there's two types of chips on outrun boards. There's, uh, let's see, there's 27C512s and 27C256s. So when I was looking at my board, and I'll actually open it up right here. So I was opening up my board and looking at it. <laughs> and I realized by looking at the numbers here that these two are 512s. They're supposed to be 256s. So you can actually use 512s in there. It's the same pinout and stuff. The only difference is if you do use the 512 chips, you have to double up the, the ROM on there. So I didn't do that. I never doubled up this. And these here are the road. So the one on the right is the right side of the road. And the one on the left is the left side of the road. They're actually identical data in them. However, um, you know, the CPU and everything and the logic calls for different uh, parts. So even though it's the same data, it only gets the left side and the other one the right side. So these two control the road. I figured this out with trial and error and also looking at schematics and going online and stuff. And then this here is the Yamaha. This is actually the Yamaha um, synthesis. Um, it has like FM synthesis, uh, which is similar to like, you know, if you had a sound blaster back in the day um, or a Roland, it actually displayed uh, those samples. However, um, Actually, technically, they're not samples. It's just music. It's FM synthesis music. So these here control the samples. So this will say get ready and stuff like that. So it'll say get ready. It'll have the skid sounds. Um, also, on the music, the FM synthesis is there um, if you swap this out into the correct chip. However, the samples, like for the snare drum and all that stuff, come from these. So all the sound data, like samples and stuff like that and speech, all come from here and then the FM synthesis is separate so sometimes people look at music but it sounds a little weird it's because it just has this and no samples or vice versa where they don't have music and they only have sound effects so I got this over time I actually got the whole thing working however um, I just wanted to kind of break it down in case there's any moment having any problems with it um, so basically these two again road so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna swap out um, one of the chips just the right side so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, and I'm gonna swap it out with a proper, um, let's see, uh, 256 chip, because right now these are uh, 27C512s and it really needs 27C256. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna put the tripod up and I'll quickly swap it out. All right guys, so I have the actual chips here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it says uh, OPR10185.11 and OPR101. 86.47 so the end here just signifies where it goes i usually put that in there so it's ic11 and ic47 so i'm going to go ahead and pop these in these are actually burned on the proper uh 256 chips so i went ahead and let me go ahead and pop this out this is the 101.85 and this is 101.86 the opr all right so i'm taking these out so let me go ahead and pop this one in there. And again, the notch, you can look here. This one doesn't have any chip in there. The notch is to the right and all of them are the same. So you want to face it in the same direction. So I'm going to pop this one in there. 
So that's the first one. And then the second one is 10185, which is here, and the notch is that way. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that one in there. So actually, you know what? Let me take this one out because I wanted to show you guys half the road first. So 10186 would be this one here. All right. So the one on the left is the one that's not right, and the one on the right is the correct one. So let me go ahead and fire it up, and you'll see that the one, the road on the right, it's actually the same data, like I said, in both chips, but the one on the right kind of calls for it, and then the one on the left, you'll see it's looking for data. It's not in the correct place because this is burned incorrectly, and it'll look weird. So let me go ahead and turn it on. All right, so if you look here, this is the left side of the road. The right side of the road has graphics on it. Once it merges together, You'll see in a second. Let me actually just start up a game. All right. So you'll see on the left, it's a typical line because there's no graphics in there. And I'm just going to drive a little bit. And you'll see the roads merge now. Right here. So you see how the right side, oops, you see how the right side now has road on it, right? So that's because the chip on the right is burned correctly. The one on the left, as you can see, is not there. So it's really funny because those lines in the middle um, are actually overlapped with the other graphics. So once I burn it correctly, you'll see it. So, all right, so let me go ahead and get out of this. I'm gonna shut the machine down. We'll pop the chip in there and you'll see it. Um, behave correctly for the road. All right, guys, so we're back. So the one on the right is what you saw that was good, and the one on the left is the one that's bad. So the machine's off. I'm actually gonna just quickly pry this one out. This is 10186. So here's the one that's burned properly. So I hadn't realized this the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, just by doing that other board when I was cleaning it and burn it, reburning the ROMs, I realized that they're all different file sizes, and that's when I would look everything over and I said, "Holy crap, these are responsible for the road. Let's reburn these and see what happens." So let's go ahead. Um, that's already set. I'm actually going to just turn it on, keep the camera rolling here. So let me go ahead and stick this off. Okay, so I just turned it on, and as you can see right here, once it comes up. There's road. So there's road now on the left side and the right side. So if I were to start a game, now you see road. So I can't believe it was something as simple as this. This is actually great because now that I have um, this working, I can go ahead and get the sound working. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll work the same exact way. So now I'm actually driving and you can see the roads merge and I have left and right. So we're good to go. So there you have it guys. So let me go ahead and I just crashed. That thing is super loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, swap out the rest of the, uh, first I'll actually swap out the Yamaha uh, FM synthesis uh, chip there, the data. So we'll try that and see what happens. Okay guys, we're back. So. Um, I ran out of um, 256 chips. I actually ordered more on eBay for the other boards that I have to populate. But for now, there's a little trick you can do where you double up the ROM. And I'll show you guys how to do that. If you guys are impatient um, and want to see how to do it, you can actually go to the, um, I believe it was a versus, uh, the multi versus video that I did. I actually have how to program it and you have to double up the, the bin chips on that as well. So there's a tutorial kind of on how to do it. You can use the same concept. That's what I used to do this one. Uh, but I will have a video on doing that. Um, in the future, along with um, the enhanced uh, Outrun Edition. I'll show you how to burn that as well. So uh, this is it, guys. So you see EPR 10187.88, that's what I named it. 88 is just the IC number. And then I just made a little note for myself. I wrote times two here. So it says X2, that way you, know, you can tell uh, that it is a double chip and I stacked it. So this is a 27C512 chip, but it really should be a, um, 
27C256 chip. So let me go ahead and just pop that in. The machine is off and it's this chip right here. So this is the kind of, this is the area over here where this is the Yamaha chip. You have the DAC over here and all that stuff. So this kind of actually takes the sample. So I think what was happening is I'd hear a click sound every time you went to fire uh, the music and stuff. So it was trying to do something. It just wasn't taking the correct samples and the correct uh, sound data, I guess, from here. So there it is. Let me go ahead and pop that in. And again, the notch is facing to the right. So this is the doubled up chip. And let's see if we get sound. All right, I figured I'd give you guys a close up before I show you, but these are the two chips that I replaced before. So we got the road working. And now for the sound, this is the DAC chip for the Yamaha and all this uh, sound area, the CPU for that. And this is the FM synthesis chip right here. I guess the data for all this whole circuit here. So this one is times two because it's supposed to be 27C256, but I made it double because it's a 512 that I'm using. So it should work. I have everything orientated correctly. So fingers crossed, let's go ahead and turn it on. So this is it here. And I don't have a track mode set, so it's still gonna be silent until I start a game. And it's also gonna be silent during the um, selection screen, but you can see I do have the road there, so that's working still. That's a good sign. That's actually controlled by the synthesis chip, that sound effect. And there you go, we got sound. Nice. But you can see there's still no um, skid sounds, you know, nothing like that. So you can just hear sound for the music and that's about it. So the FM synthesis, again, those sounds are working. So if I hit coin in, that's controlled by the FM synthesis. If you go to checkpoint, that's also synthesis. Let's go to signal one. That's correct too. That's correct. Now the slip is a sample. You hear that click sound? That means it's playing something. It just has the wrong data. So now safety zone, same thing. It's not playing the sample, it's playing bad data. Crash one, that's also a sample, that's not working. And so on. Crash two, rebound. Here, let me go to crash two so you can see. Uh, let's go to voice one. There's a clicking sound, but no data. So it is playing it. It's just not registering correctly because it doesn't have the right data to put in there. Wave, same thing. That's all controlled by that. Cheers. And music one works, but it sounds weird. You can hear click sounds, you hear it? Because it's trying to play sound that's not correct for the samples on top of the FM synthesis. All right, so let's go to the next one. Same deal. You hear little crackling sounds. That's actually trying to play different samples that are incorrect. So let's go down to music three. Yep, so there's no drums in that, so. Okay, so that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the machine down once more, go in the back and switch out the rest of those chips where the data is stored for the samples. All right, guys, so we're back. And by the way, if you see my t-shirt, this is actually a uh, tribute to Arcade Body Shop. He had such a great channel, that's Jeff. Um, I think he took a little kind of a sabbatical or, or two. I'm not sure what he's doing, um, but uh, he has such a great channel. He does great body work with everything. So I'm just, I, I ordered one of the t-shirts. I'm a great fan of his channel and I thought it was cool. So I want to support him. So uh, yeah, definitely check out his channel. He still has a lot of videos up and uh, he's really good at what he does. Hopefully get to meet him one day. That'll be cool. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these out. These are all the OPR chips. These control, that's all the data that for samples like voice, sound effects, all kinds of things like that. So I'm taking these out. I'm just leaving them on the side over here. 
in the order I took them out. And then, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can grab the ones, grab the ones that I just did. Let's see. These them. Uh, yep, yeah, these are them. Okay. So again, I wrote X2 on them. You can't see it, it's too far away, but these say X2, and these are 512 chips. They're supposed to be 256 chips, but I ended up uh, burning, uh, you know, double ROM. So the first one should be OPR10188. OPR10188, I'll just turn them this way so I know. Perfect. Should pop in pretty easy. All right. So road, samples, FM synthesis. So let's go ahead and see if I can fire it up. I'm actually gonna leave this on here. Let me just get my remote, turn it on. Let's see if we see anything different here. Right now it's in a track mode, but there is no sound. So let's go ahead and start a game. And let's see here. Okay, now I hear waves. That's a sound effect, so that's good. So let's uh, leave it on passing breeze. Get ready. So get ready, that's good. And we have sound effects. Let's see, I'm gonna try to skid out over here. Let's see, on a curve I can do it. Now you can hear the drums, you hear that? Those are the sampled ones, it sounds a lot better now. Let's see if I can do it. There you go, so sound effects. Awesome. All right, so let me go into test mode. I'm actually gonna put it down here. All right, so I'm in test mode. I'm gonna go down to sound. I'll press it again. All right, so coin in, we'll, we already know works. All these two. So I'll just go through everyone just to say uh, we did it to show that everything is working. And that sound you hear is me turning the steering wheel. <laughs> this is an older steering wheel. Okay, so far. Crash, crash two, rebound. Uh, let's see, voice one. Checkpoint. Okay. Congratulations. Get ready. Oh, voice four, of course, as you know, does not have a voice. That's by design. Sample is actually on there. It's actually from uh, Space Harry, I believe, but they never use it in the game. So, wave. We heard that before when we were in the screen. And then cheers was the one that wasn't working on the other board. And it works here. And I confirmed that it works because of MAME. I actually tried it before I went here. So you got this music. See, it sounds way different. You have the FM synthesis plus the samples. It sounds like a hi-hat. Now the drums. That's awesome. So all those drums and everything are from the samples. Same thing here, you can hear the drum set. And let's go to the third one. Great. All right, so it looks like it's working. So instead of playing a game, what I'm gonna do actually now is I'm gonna stop this and we have a little surprise. I'm actually gonna install the Enhanced Edition of OutRun. I have five chips that I'm gonna swap out. I burned everything myself. I will have a tutorial in the future on that. It actually was pretty easy to do. Uh, you just have to compile it yourself uh, because he doesn't distribute the ROMs because obviously distributing ROMs isn't, isn't legal. So uh, he just has the code, you just patch it. He has a patch that you just apply to it. And it's really easy to do. Um, you know, the instructions say how to do it, but I'm gonna kind of clarify that and we'll go through it together and we'll burn our own enhanced chips. And then you can also solder on a thing on the board. I'll show you over here where it is. Let me turn this a little brighter here. The board has this capacitor right here. And that capacitor is not as big um, on this one. This one actually looks pretty big. I wonder if this has 
if someone already tried replacing that. Uh, but anyway, I do have the capacitors. I bought them separately. You can run the enhanced ROMs without this uh, modified with the original one. It will work, um, but your scores won't save as long because this battery really doesn't last as long. But it'll last for months if, um, you know, as long as you turn it on and get power, um, it'll be fine. Um, but the other one, it lasts even longer with it off. So I really want to swap that out. I'm not going to do it at first because I just want to show you guys now. I'm just going to quickly swap them out. So the chips that you swap out are here. They're actually the same chips that you use for the RAM test. So these four chips are swapped out. And then I believe uh, one, I think this one down here is the one you do. This one is a sound fix that they do. This one's kind of optional. You don't have to do that one. Uh, but these are the ones that change everything. And then I did that one just for the heck of it because typically you do the four and then you do the sound down there as well. So let me go ahead and switch those out and uh, we'll go ahead and pop the game on. All right, guys, so this is an OPR 10188.71. I actually doubled it up. This is a 256 um, chip that's supposed to be in here, but I made it a 512 chip. I just doubled the ROM. Um, these up here are 512 and this one's 256. So let me go ahead and pop this one in. I think I might have bent it a little too much inward. Because typically when you first burn these, they don't, uh, they come out a little too wide. So you have to kind of bend them a little bit. Kind of like doing this, you know, to bend them. So let me go ahead and pop this in. The notch goes this way. And I think that's it right there. That looks good. All right. And then I'm going to take these out. So I believe, let me just double check, 58, 118, 133, and 132, okay. So 58 would be here. 133, 132, 118, 117. Oh, okay, it's different ones. Oh, it's these four. 117, 118, 132, and 133. Okay, so it's these four that you removed. I thought it was these four. These are the ones you use for the RAM. So I was mistaken when I said that earlier. So it's actually these four. This is exactly why when I label them now, uh, you can see these didn't have them. They don't really have like where they go. It's just EPR and then the number. These have the number and then the location. So let me go ahead and pop these out. So 10382, let me just double check. 10382, yep. 10380. 10381. 10383. Yeah, so it definitely is those four. So let me just pop these off. 10382, so let's pop that one in. You know what, I'll just put it here. Put them down over here. And I've popped so many of these off so many times in this board. <laughs> it's actually a little easier on this. Okay, so now 8-1 goes on top. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna do the bottom ones first. It's just easier to see them. So zero, 10380, and notch goes that way, and that's 133, so let's pop that in there. And again, these are a little too wide, so let me just correct them. All right. And then the one next to it would be 82. And that's 118. Yep, 118. So again, these are brand new, so I just gotta bend them. Perfect. Okay. And then 8-1 goes on that side. So again, I'll just... And okay. Let me just get in there. Oh, my light just shut off. <laughs> That's okay, guys. 
I'm not going to stop the recording. Also, I wanted to point out that Diagnostic Sound Test menu was modified slightly with this new enhancement. So basically you have 18 items I could do in the regular one, except they added Music 4 on the bottom. And in order to add it, they had to take something out. So what they took out was the Voice 4, which is, you know, doesn't really do anything. So I think it's really cool that they did that. And Music 4 is actually the ending here. So it's the ending music. I think it's really cool. The other thing that they added was the option with the dip switch setting to change from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So I thought that was neat too. Just thought I'd mention it real quick. All right guys, so I popped in the chips there. Um, I'm actually gonna go in depth on how to do that, but I have the enhanced outrun ROMs. I burn them, I compile them. You can actually um, download the patch to do that on the, on the guy's website. And he has instructions on how to do that, but they're a little vague. It's really hard if you're not really into programming. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you guys through that um, probably in the next video. Um, and it's pretty easy to do. So I just pop those in and I'll show you how to do that So I won't get into that in this video, but I will show you right now. I adjusted the uh, dip switches To all be on on the right side for the dips for free play and with free play um, Typically if you don't have this enhanced ROM it kind of just sits there with credits on um, And it doesn't have like this little demo mode. So this has a more enhanced demo on the enhanced ROMs um, the other difference too is let's say Hit free play. It should show you everything. See how I go left and right? The music starts. It didn't have that in the other one. So this kind of lets you know what you're getting into. So I'm going to do that one and start. Get ready. The other thing it has as well is has a high score save so we'll save that onto the um, that capacitor I do have a super capacitor that I'm gonna kind of solder in there but I'm gonna save that for the video where we're actually burning these ROMs so I can show you how to do it and then we'll go ahead and solder that in as well you don't need it uh, but I want to have it because who knows I don't have this on uh, you know every week <laughs> sometimes it'll be off like a month from my vacation or something so I want that super capacitor in there so it'll save my high scores it actually charges up uh, when you turn it on. So if you don't have it on for a month, you charge it up, you're good to go again. It just kind of resets it. But um, the one that's built in doesn't really have that. There we go. It almost crashed, but but it still works. So right now I do not have the capacitor in. I'm going to kind of solder that in next time. I'm just going to try to get on the board here. Checkpoint. that good at this game. I'm okay. You know, I'm not horrible. Um, I never break. I don't even know why they put a break button on there or a break pedal. Uh, I usually downshift like I just did. I really don't know the levels after this too well. Yes, yeah, I just crashed. I should have eased off on the gas there. But that's good because I want my time to run out. And then we'll have a full uh, last credit video on this. It's a series, if you haven't checked it out, it's pretty cool. Everything's working great. Nice. All right, three, two, one, all right. Let's see. Okay, 
Okay, so I got on the board. That's good. So I'm just going to put Dell in there. D, D, L. So typically, when you shut the machine off, um, and by the way, this is enhanced as well. In the real game, what you do is if you hit the wrong letter, it'll just end and it assumes you hit end. But this one sits there and you have to hit the pedal again to hit end. Or you can hit the back button. So it allows you to mess up your errors if you have them. So I'm going to hit it. So little, tiny little things like that make it really polished. Okay, so let me go ahead and power this off. I'm actually going to leave the camera running here. So I just powered it off. I'm gonna wait a few seconds. Turn it on. All right. So I just turned it on now. So let's just uh, see what happens. We'll wait for the high scores to pop up. And by the way, I tried having the uh, demo mode on. It's highly annoying. <laughs> it does work properly in this because it's set for free play and it does have a demo mode. But it just has sound effects, so um, all you hear is driving and skidding, and uh, it just gets on your nerves after a while, so I shut it off. I believe that's dip number three on the left side. You turn it off, and it's non-attract mode. Okay, so... There we go. So, looks like the best outrunners, and um, there might be a separate scoreboard for the rest, let's see. Oh, there it is. So it did save it. Alright, well, now I know. <laughs> so let me put Dell again. So yeah, it does work. I guess I wasn't the top five is what it is. That was six through 10. So that's probably what it was. All right guys, so don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit that little bell icon, which will let you uh, know when I post videos and hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope it really helps you troubleshoot. You know, I'm really learning a lot about this game now. So uh, hopefully once uh, we can troubleshoot the other boards, uh, I can get another one working and get two outruns at this point. Plus the turbo one, maybe we can kind of try to, um, I'm not sure if it's possible, but uh, we could probably de-suicide that one. Even though it's not suicided, but we can kind of get the copy protection off where it takes off the battery and we swap the CPU uh, with the FD1094 chip. So, all right guys, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.